This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together, short bite edition. We're going in the nostalgia machine. <laughs> little ghosts beware, little Ariel playing in the labyrinth maze. The amazing. The amazing labyrinth. labyrinth. All right. This so is today, a classic from Ravensburger. Ravensburger. Uh, so we're talking about Labyrinth and Labyrinth Jr., most notably. Yeah. So it, this is one that I'm not sure exactly when it came out, but I do have very fond memories of playing this in my classroom. By the age of this book, it looks like it's, I mean, the box, this is a uh, 90s, early 90s, 80s. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I think, I'm think i thinking it's early 90s. This is well so loved. I used to play regular Labyrinth and then I didn't know that they had Junior Labyrinth until uh, we had children and we found a copy of that. Uh, this is just a classic game. You've probably seen this before. Mm-hmm. It's it's basically a, a game where you're seeking to find treasures that are throughout a maze. So at the beginning of the game, you've got a bunch of tiles, and they're straights or corners or T's, and they are randomly put throughout um, the board. And every other space, both horizontally and vertically, the tile is stuck. To it's fixed. It's yeah. fixed to the board. So when you put down your tiles, you can only put that between those fixed pieces. So what ends up happening is that you make a giant maze that it makes no sense, right? It there's dead ends and things don't connect to other things. And it's things. always shifting and moving. And yeah. so yeah. So what, what happens is you put it all down and you have one extra tile. So on your turn, you're trying to acquire you're trying to move your character to acquire a treasure. Um, but the first thing you have to do is shift the maze. So you have to either move uh, a line vertically or horizontally by one tile, and then you move as far as you can get. So every turn, each person is shifting the maze, which makes it difficult to get to to where you're going. So the adult version, um, you have a certain number of treasures that you're seeking, and those are hidden so that the other players don't know what you're going for. In the kid version, in Junior Labyrinth, there's uh, each tile's flipped up, and everybody's trying to get that same mm-hmm. uh, treasure in the maze. And then, you know, whoever gets the most. So I think an adult, it's whoever finishes all five of their treasure cards first. And in the kid version, it's whoever gets the most of the treasures at the end that everyone was, you know, collectively going for. Junior Labyrinth also has a much smaller board. So the decisions that you have to make are, are not as great. Uh, this is one I just, I love for the logic, right? So it's great because in Junior Labyrinth, there are basically eight different positions that you could move horizontally or vertically. So eight different directions you could shift the maze. Mm-hmm. And in the um, in the regular version, it's probably like 16 maybe. It's, it's quite a bit more. Yeah. So what's great is our daughter knows where she needs to, where she is, where she needs to get to. And she needs to basically mentally calculate all of the different ways she's allowed to shift the maze and what that does to her path to get to the treasure. So there's so much mental calculation going on with this one. And I, I can just see the gears turning when she's when she's thinking about, okay, it's, it's a visual, cause and effect. Yeah, visual cause and effect, um, pathfinding, which is a very, very complex thing to do for a young young person that is really taking a lot of uh, computing power upstairs because you're looking at what you're doing you're looking at possibilities and probabilities you know what do i need to move into or what do i need to move so that comes into me that i can i can move forward um i think it is an incredibly powerful skill especially if your kid is getting into you know solving mazes you know like line mazes um, being able to visually see, be, visually distinguish between what I'm on, what I'm not on, those are very cool skills. Um, and believe it or not, very STEMI. Um, it's kind of computer programming logic built into this. You know, I think some of the early programming, you know, if you're in a com, you know a CS degree or something in college, you're you're doing path dependencies. You're you're figuring out paths through, you know, data, or you're you're figuring out paths through, you know, trying to solve out a logical problem based on the conditions that you have. And these are 
these <laughs> this game is basically that, yeah. but in a very primitive sense. Yeah, in a fun kind of medieval type setting. Uh, this this junior version plays in about fifteen minutes. I would say yeah. the adult is closer to half an hour. Uh, it's two to four players, both of them, and. Um, the junior version, the box says ages five to eight, which I think is about accurate. Um, the adult version get, stumps me sometimes. So I, yeah. I would say, you know, you might be able to play it with a seven-year-old, but the junior version definitely is great for our younger learners. Our daughter started playing it when she was four. And I think that that was, That's she was, little... it was still a little young. I think that five on the box is an accurate, <laughs> an accurate age. So this is a really great one for you to play with your children, your child or children. Um, and a really great one for them to play with each other. It's not so ultra competitive i think yeah. because you know there's just a lot of thinking how are we moving things and and where would we move to and so you can go to that first level of logic which is if i shift the maze what does that do to my path to get to the treasure um but then also knowing what my opponent is also trying to get this how are they likely to shift the maze mm -hmm. And so you can kind of think ahead. So it's introducing some early strategy concepts mm -hmm. too. It's all in a really fun package. It's from Ravensburger. So of course it's got great components that are going to last. I mean, I think the copy that we have is from the nineties. So, uh, yeah, 1995. So yeah, this has been around a while <laughs> and still hold the hot great. new movie. Jurassic park has been just released. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's it's really good. There's oh, elements of luck. Flat. There's great skill. Um, yeah, right. You know, there's there's memory and what you're going for and how you get there, um, and just really great cause and effect. So th this is a classic. I, I can't believe we haven't talked about it yet, but I was so happy that we got this for. <laughs> we tried to play. We played regular labyrinth together. The when we first got it, this was I think we got it before we had children. Yeah, and. Um, we we got that purchased that game and I remember like us struggling as adults going, okay, well, how do I move the maze? And <laughs> you're you're good at it because you can think several steps ahead. But it was more yeah. of a challenge for me. It's um it's a great it's just a classic. Yeah, it's a great great early thinking game. Uh, you know, if you want to get if you're somebody who enjoys chess, checkers, things of that nature that where there's a lot of path um, options to play into and you want to get your kid into it. These are type of those, these are the early beginner games where you're trying to like strategize your way through, you know, a world or through a game that's kind of grid like this is a great entry level into that. Yeah. I think that the medieval type theme stuff too really helps to lend itself. You know, it's a fun game. It's, it's one that's engaging nice, large tiles. And mm -hmm. it's something that our, our daughter's always excited to play with us. Yep. So highly recommend uh, Labyrinth and Junior Labyrinth. Junior the Labyrinth. Amazing. The amazing Labyrinth. Labyrinth. <laughs> By Ravensburger. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!